What's going on, brother? How you been? Guys, what's going on? I feel like I'm talking to my second family right now. I love oh, boys. That. We feel yeah, the same. Right. We feel the same way too. Um, what What was your What in the world was your coach thinking going for two? What was that all about? I think you know what. That's what we do. That's what That's what we're about. We're an aggressive team, and it's been known, or at least within this facility, that if we're in a tight game like that, we're going for it. When we were going, in, we were, when we were playing the Colts we're on the last drive, well, Malarkey said before the drive, he says, "We're going to score. We're going for two. So that, that's how that's how this team that we operate in the in the fourth quarter. He doesn't seem like a guy who lets his hair down, Taylor. I'll be very honest with you. To be honest with you, I feel the same exact way. I mean, Malarkey's <laughs> not much of a hair down kind of guy, but right. I guess when he gets a wild hair, when he gets in the fourth and fourth and short in the fourth quarter, I think he's feeling it a little bit. But what what goes on in a huddle when when it is now time to go for two, and you hear that the coach is doing that with three three and change to go on the road? It's zero degrees out, basically. What's going on in a huddle when you get a call like that coming from the sideline? Honestly, so many things are happening. It's not that huge of a deal. Sorry, Philip Supernod just knocked on the door and gave me the finger, so it was tough for me to who did that on there. But, <laughs> um, no, when you're when you're in the fourth quarter of a game like that, and it's it's all of that is going on, and it's negative whatever wind chill, you kind of don't really have an opportunity to think. You just know we have our two point plays. We've had them in, in the books for a while, so we knew exactly what they're going to call. And uh, it was a run pass option, and they had seven in the box, so Marcus put it to the pass, and yeah, you know, they just covered it pretty well. I actually didn't even see the play yet. What's what's uh, Marcus like in the huddle? Marcus is exactly how he is off the field, on the field. Calm, collect, man a few words. But I'll tell you what he did do, which really fired me up. Okay. Because we ran, we ran the two-point play. And um, if you watch the play, actually, when the ball snapped, I'm on a knee, and Jack is looking at me. So he and I are both laid off the ball. And um, the first read wasn't open, had, and nothing was open, really. So he threw it, and whatever got hit and threw it. And then um, I walked into Marcus, and I was like, hey, man, sorry about that. I didn't even know we changed the play, blah, blah, blah. And he said, and I'm going to paraphrase a little bit, but he said, F that. He goes, what's going to happen is the defense is going to stop them. Then you guys, all you have to do is give me time and we're going to go win this game. And I was like, oh, my God. Hmm. Yes. And I was just fired, dude. It was awesome. It was really cool to see him get that firing. He said that as soon as the two-point conversion was, uh, was no good? Uh, yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. He knew, he knew exactly what was going to happen. And then for suck up to hit a 53-yarder, just boot it in negative 14 wind chill. Let's talk about a hero right there. And his, his, his career long is 54, probably sunny, you know, flowers are blossoming, all that nonsense. Not in the wintertime, buddy. Not when he did it. Yeah, and that was after Andy <laughs> Reid tried to, to ice him, and he didn't. He, he, he got a second swing in the leg, and he didn't, he didn't miss that one. That right was... before I got on this call, I was actually in a special teams meeting watching the field goal, and they had the TV copy. And you can see Andy Reid kind of gives a chuckle to himself, like he knew what he just did. He knew what he did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's got a phenomenal mustache. you got to respect him. Certainly in the cold. Certainly. Yes. Was that the Absolutely. coldest game you've ever played in, Taylor? By far, Jim. Rich, why did I say Jim? Oh, because I thought we were talking about Jim Harbaugh. That's why. Nah. That, but yeah. I don't know if that's like true that or not. Way? I don't know if that's true or not. Are, are, you, are you distracted right now having this conversation with me? Who oh, was... I messed up. Back to you, Rich. Let's no. do this. Uh, so let, let's start again. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, Mike, is that the, the uh, coldest game you've ever played in? <laughs> I'm yeah. sorry. I, th I thought it was. I was thinking malarkey. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was thinking. Okay. okay. Sorry, Josh. I'm oh, sorry. I was thinking Klein. Nice. Um, <laughs> that, that was the coldest game I've ever played in by far, and it was cold. And my mustache was actually frozen, and nobody told me until after the game that it was frozen the whole time. And I mean, it was. It's crazy. You're you're watching the kickoff, and there's steam literally coming up off the ground because they're, they're heated. They're heated field. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was definitely just old school December football, especially when you're playing for something that we are right now. Taylor Lewan joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. You guys talking to Super Bowl openly? Uh, talk about the Super Bowl? Yeah. I mean, I know the date. No, no, just <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, about playing in it, about going oh, on a run for the that, ages that's here. been in my mind since I got drafted. I called it. I told my buddy Chris Arnold, I said, 2017 Super Bowl champs. And now you mean 17 season or mm. this year? You know, I, I have myself a little cushion. Do you do? <laughs> yes, you do. I'm in. I'm ready, buddy. Yeah, you do have a little bit of cushion. No, but, yeah. but in the locker room, are you talking about it? Anybody mentioning it? Like, let's do this. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think everyone's about it. You know, I got a couple plans myself. We're going we're gonna to go to the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and then you and me are going to go film, like, 15 Marriott commercials together. <laughs> All coming out of elevators. We're going to joke around and have a blast. I'm in. I'm in on that front, Taylor. I'll speak oh, to them. I'll oh, it's a little personality 
body in the game. I'm ready. I know. I'm ready when you are. You both know. Relationship to the next level. Now let's get to this though, Taylor. You have a little bit too much personality, man. Uh, what's with right. What's with all these personal foul penalties? What's with you getting the gate? You know better I, than I this. Think the refs are just mad about something, but you no. know what's going on with you? Come on. You know what this issue is? Is you know I was just born too late. I should have played in the '90s and the '80s, but. <laughs> I, there's a way I want to play football, and that way it's through the whistle, hard nose, and make sure the guy feels me for the week after he I played against him. And, you know, I, I, I found out early in the season you can't play like that, and I've had to tone it down a bit. Um, there's some things I, I shouldn't have done this season, but one of them that kind of specifically stands out to all of us when we talk about personal fouls is when I got ejected from the Packers game. And, and when it comes to that, my focus is protecting Marcus. And when somebody deliberately comes off the ball, goes through linemen, before the ball is even snap and hits him, he's going to get an earful until it's then until I can no longer do it. So, um, shouldn't have gotten kicked out. Shouldn't have done some of the things I did. But uh, I want everyone to know that I'm here to protect Marcus and make sure that Demarco gets yards. Now, That's has, fact. has did Malarkey say this to you? I mean, did you, did you have to be sat down, or did you just figure this out yeah. on your own here? Principal's office. The minute the game was over, you were. Um, uh-huh. I he pulled me and he's like, "Look, I love the way you play, but." You, know, you cannot get kicked out of the game. It could have really gone bad. You know, the, for, to play left tackle on, a, on any NFL team is a huge responsibility, and you can't take yourself out of a situation like that, especially in that big of a game. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you're in a fortunate situation. You got a heck of a quarterback at the, you know, as he's ascending. You got these running backs, and then, um, you know, uh, unlike me, uh, you're not surrounded by anybody from Ohio State who could have given it to you. Yeah, a few weeks State, ago. Penn State, all of them are bad. Yeah, uh, do, do you have any Penn Staters on your team, Taylor? Tom, uh, Tom Canavy. He's an assistant strength coach. He was at Penn State in the uh, the nineties. Okay. We won't talk about that. No, no. And two D linemen. Yeah, De- uh, Dequan Jones and Austin Johnson. <sighs> uh, that Ohio State game left a hole in my heart, Taylor. It... I, I'm happy you're talking about it because this is just ridiculous. This really chats my ace, and I'll tell you why. Go. Is is that that fourth down? First off, one of the refs is in like the Ohio Hall of Fame or some nonsense like that, and uh, the Ohio Refing Hall Hall of Fame. <laughs> and then the DPI that wasn't called is just out of control. And then the four, the fourth down stop that was obviously a stop. Mm-hmm. It just you know really really grinds my gears, Rich. It was just it 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 hurt me. But I did see that video. I don't know about the Ohio Hall of Fame and all that sort of business. I did see one video of one official slapping Mike Weber on the behind as he's coming back in the that. game. Div- no, it, that was a very have, aggressive slap in the behind. Right I'm sur- I'm, but the I'm guy being- that told me about that play, actually, the, the Ohio Hall of Fame was Steve Hutchinson. He's actually working with the Titans now. So <laughs> He brought that up to me. I thought you yeah, like but that doesn't help our familiar name. Taylor, that doesn't, doesn't, help help our, case. doesn't help our case here. Yeah. It seems like, aren't, you know. Aren't Desmond Howard, Howard and Charles Woodson both in the Ohio Hall of Fame? Um, but they're not slapping Mike. They're, they're not slapping yeah, Mike Weber on a behind. On. No, in all seriousness, though, Taylor, in any part of your career, anywhere, have you ever seen an official slap the behind of a player as he's getting back on? Once I've seen that official eject people, specifically me, but I've never seen someone slap somebody <laughs> in the behind. Say, yeah, I, Charles Woodson may be in the Ohio Hall of Fame, and uh, who was the other person you said? Desmond Howard. Yeah, that one. Both from Ohio. I've yeah. never seen them ref a game, so it's not important. Mm-hmm. You know. Those guys, they're, if they went to ref a game, like, okay, well, Michigan's got the edge here. You mm-hmm. know, Desmond Howard's refing the game. But this guy, who's supposed to be completely unbiased, mm-hmm. is running around, throwing yellow flags like it's his job, which it is, mm-hmm. but in the favor of Ohio State. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree. Taylor, I appreciate the time. I love it when you come on the Jim Eisen show, um, <laughs> you know, with the two weeks yeah, to go. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Let's chat down the line, okay? Yeah, absolutely. I'll be in California this off season. Hoping well, for a call, buddy. And I, you, you come. I, but I, you know, you're like the. I got to rise and grind. I got to do this. I got to do that. That's life, man. Okay. I'm sorry we can't sit on a microphone all day and just absolutely crush it. But some of us <laughs> got to make a job a different way. So let's figure it out. Get we'll... me on those Marriott commercials, and I'll do whatever you want. <laughs> Again, I'll kick that up the the flagpole. I'll raise that one. See how it flies. It's Taylor Luan here on The Rich Eisen Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.